Welcome back to the channel everyone. So for today's video, it's gonna be a full build breakdown and um, one year review ownership of the Accord V6. But before that, I have to get the car warmed up and I have to visit the storage unit. So we're gonna do that real quick. make a video about um, my full build breakdown and um, my one year ownership of the car so I get a lot of questions about um, the body kit especially the front end so I'm gonna just say it right now I have the HFP all around the the front lip the side skirts the body lines the wheels and the rear um, so I have the full HFP kit if there's a lot of people that ask me about that um, it is a OEM option. You could buy it from the dealership. I'm not sure how much it costs because I was lucky enough to get it with the car. So that's just a little bit about the exterior. Um, other than that, I have nothing else done to the car. It's just the full HFP. Um, and then the grill, this is from Spec Detuning. I do get a lot of questions about this. Um, sorry that it's kind of dirty, but um, I got this on eBay. It was only about 60 bucks. It is kind of a bitch to install. Um, because you have to take out the original OEM grill, which is a huge hassle. You have to take the whole bumper off and then you have to basically pry, you know, the grill out. But um, it's worth it to me. It looks cooler. Um, it's supposed to be Mugen inspired. They have they have a legit grill for uh, a legit Mugen grill for um, the sedan, but I have the coupe. So this is going to be like kind of a rep, you know, basically. But anyways, let's get a little closer. Um, Cause we're gonna start talking about the engine mods. Um, I have the RV6 high flow pre-cat. You can see one right there. There's another one a little bit down in the engine bay, but you won't be able to see it. Um, I have a manifold spacer, so you can't really see that, but you can tell that it's it's lifted because you can see how it's bending right here. It actually broke. It broke my stock one because uh, it was so crusty that when it lifted it, it cracked it, and basically, you know, my car was kind of down for that time period. Um, I also have the P2R ported lower runners, which you won't be able to see either because it's it's in this area. It's like in there. Um, oh, you can kind of see it right Oh, you can kind of see it? Oh yeah. Oh, but you can see, okay, you can see the spacer right there actually. But anyways, the ported runners, you won't be able to see because it's, it's below the manifold. Um, as you can see, I have a stock intake. Uh, we don't. I don't know if that's going to change or not. I'm not too sure what the gains are, but I am going to do the upgraded intake manifold and upgraded throttle body. Um, we'll see if I decide to go intake after that. But um, let's go to this side. So you can see that I do have coilovers. They're aftermarket. It's on full stiff. I have the Fortune Auto coilovers. Um, all four corners are Fortune Autos. It's the 500 series. And... Um, the spring rates are 14k front, 10k rear. I did custom spec that because usually it's 10 and 6. Um, I have them on f all full or all four are full stiff. And um, uh, let's see. So for the camber kit, I actually have I have Megan Racing and everything. So Megan Racing front camber kit, Megan Racing rear camber kit, which includes the camber uh, rear camber arms, the rear toe arms, and the rear traction arms. Let's talk about exhaust. So I already said a little bit about the exhaust with the RV6 high flow pre-cat, but I do have, after that, it connects to a J-pipe, which is RV6 as well. And then um, I have a full three inch exhaust. So um, I have a Cook's muffler, K-O-O-K-S. It's the three inch, it's like about this, maybe this wide and then this long. Um, that's f directly after the J-pipe and then once you once you go past that I have a vibrant resonator um, I can have that linked in the description because a lot of people ask about my exhaust setup I'll have it in the description but um, I have a, a vibrant resonator and then I have a um, I guess a neo chrome like neo black chrome um, exhaust tip so it's basically it's a little um, it reflects in the light it looks almost rainbow colorish but yeah that's that is my exhaust setup. I did do a lot of emphasis on performance parts. That's why I have a lot of bolt-ons and I have the suspension on it. Um, let's see, let's go over here. Um, 
we can go in and look inside because I do have a little bit of um, weight reduction. So it's not out yet. It, you can't see that, or you could see that the seats are out, but they're not fully um, out of it yet. But I have a rear guts. Um, let me know if you guys want to see a video of how much weight savings it does to gut out the rear. You can see the VTEC Club um, competition car sticker. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have the red Honda emblem. That's a must for Hondas. It makes you a little bit faster. Um, yeah, so this exhaust tip I think is four inches wide. Uh, it's not clean. Sorry about the dirty car. I haven't cleaned it since the track. But this is the exhaust tip I have. Um, I love it. It's a better. It looks better than my um, matte, uh, matte black one. But I think that's it for the mods. So let's just do a little overview again. Um, so I have the RV6 high flow pre kit RV6 J pipe, P2R manifold spacer, and then P2R ported runners, and then a full three inch exhaust with a Cooks muffler and a vibrant resonator. And then um, suspension wise, I have Fortune Auto coilovers, 14K front, uh, 10K rear, and then Megan Racing camber kits from the front and the back. Uh, currently my alignment specs are negative three in the front and negative two in the rear. Um, I think the limit currently is probably negative 3.3 and then probably like another negative three in the rear. But um, that's, that's, those were the specs I tracked with so that's what I'm, I have right now. Uh, but let's go on to talking about my one year ownership of the car. So we'll get into that right now. I bought it in 130 2021. Uh, so my one year anniversary was 1-30-2022, which I did celebrate at the track. Make sure to check that out. Um, I think a lot of people like the video. I want to do more track stuff. Um, it just costs a lot of money and I am busy around this time with work. But anyways, uh, for the one year anniversary ownership review, I wanted to kind of talk about, you know, how practical the car is, how fun it is, and then, you know, the future plans with it. So come a little closer. Sorry, there's someone backing out. <laughs> so for practicality wise, I have to say this car is really, really practical. Even though it's a coupe, um, there's a lot of space in the back. Um, it gets okay mileage depending on how you drive. I'm gonna say you could probably do about 22, 23 combined. But um, anyways, it's practical, practical because it has a lot of space. Um, it has a lot of torque which helps when you're driving and trying to overtake people because uh, you know you have to merge through the freeways and stuff um, it's also really comfortable even though I did lower the car and I have it on pretty stiff settings as long as the road is really good um, it still drives really well um, what else can I say let's see well okay practicality wise I guess this is a practical thing but the car does burn a lot of oil I'm not gonna lie uh, it burns a lot of oil um, the VTEC engagement is mostly where it probably burns. So if you're below 5,000, I think you could pretty much get away with um, not adding so much during your cycle. But um, it does burn a lot of oil. It depends how you drive, but practicality wise, I wanna give it like a seven out of 10. Um, now let's go to how fun the car is. So the car to me is really, really fun. Uh, not only is it the V6, it's the manual. I'm not gonna lie though, if it wasn't manual, it probably wouldn't be as fun. I can't see this car being like super fun for people unless you have the manual um, because you can, you know, rev match downshift, you can heel toe, you can, um, you know, just kind of bang the gears while, while just trying to shift perfectly and, um, you know, it's really fun with the manual. Uh, I know a lot of people that have V6s, but they're automatic. They per way, they would prefer the, the manual. They're just so rare. I've heard that for every um, one manual car, there's a thousand automatics. So with those odds, it's really hard to get, especially now that this car is more than 10 years old. Um, I'm lucky that I got the manual with the HFP. I'm really, truly blessed to get this car. Um, I, I've loved it for since I've had it, um, it's given me little issues here and there, but that's not that's not too bad considering how old it is and what I've done to it. That makes sense. But um, so for fun wise, I will give it like a nine out of ten. Um, it's been really fun. It gets more fun with mods and um, just you know as you get better with stick, it's uh, it's just really a fun time. And then lastly, the future plans. I know a lot of people are wondering this. Um, so future plans, like I said earlier, I want to do the J35Y manifold, uh, in, intake manifold, and then I'm going to do the J37 
throttle body, both ported, so it's gonna be ported inside and out. I'm hoping to get about 10 to 12 wheel horsepower gain, maybe like another 10 wheel torque. Um, and then I'm gonna do a dyno tune. Dyno tune, I wanna try to hit freaking, I want it 300 wheel, but with the limits of what I wanna put in the car, I don't think it's gonna hit 300, not a true 300 at least. Um, I'm aiming now for like 290. Uh, I think we can get it with a ported um, intake manifold and intake throttle body. Um, and then the dyno tune, so we're gonna have K-tuner obviously. And after that, I think we're gonna do more track stuff. Um, it looks like it's well received, so just let me know what you guys, what other things you'd want to see done to the car. But um, I'm also going to get a full wheel setup. Definitely going to be uh, more aggressive. It's going to be a staggered setup, 18 by nine and a half in the front, and then 18 by eight and a half in the rear. Um, I really want to do Advan GT Premium, but that's four racks, which is more than I got for this car or paid for this car. So I don't know. But um, we're gonna also probably we're gonna definitely do brake upgrades. Uh, big brake kit maybe in the future. I don't know yet. But um, other than that, it's just gonna be you know a little bit more engine modifications, brake upgrades, wheel setup, dyno tune, and more track, um, more track footage. And also, I for sure I'm gonna do more races with the vehicle, with the with the Accord. Um, it's been changed a lot since the last times I've done runs. So I want to see how it's how much it's uh, changed. Um, currently it's at 260 wheel horsepower and 248 wheel torque so let's try to see if we can get it to 290 and maybe like 270 wheel, uh, wheel torque but hopefully you guys have been liking the videos I appreciate everyone who's been subs uh, subscribing and stuff and liking the videos and commenting I really appreciate it I got a lot of big plans in the in the works um, but for that we just need more support and uh, just share the videos, uh, subscribe, like, and comment, and it definitely goes a long way. Um, you could also check out the links in the description if you want to purchase something. It helps us, helps us out with a little commission. But uh, it's been a fun ride so far. Here's to a good 2022. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next upload.